There we go. I know what you're thinking. Brian, you gotta stop drinking and 3D printing. I, I mean, I know what you're thinking. How the heck do you print wood? Well, it's not that bad actually. So most 3D printers come with the ability to print in multiple materials. In this case, we're using PLA, which is polylactic acid. It's our cornstarch based printing material that's commonly found in almost all 3D printers. In our case, we happen to pick up some of this wood infill PLA. And what it is, you're, you're not actually printing with wood directly, but this has 30% or so wood fiber inside of the plastic material. It's just kind of mixed in. So when you print this out, you get a nice wood finish and a texture. The other cool thing about it is you can actually sand and stain it as we found here. This is the final product. This is actually after it's been sanded and stained. Let's check out the process and see what it looks like. So what are some tips to getting a nice finish out of 3D printed wood? Well, you're gonna wanna use a hardened steel nozzle instead of the brass nozzle that probably came on your printer. I'm using a Prusa Mark III S for my printer. And the thing about this stuff is, this is highly abrasive because it has that wood infill. It actually has wood fibers in it. And as they go through your brass nozzle, it's going to widen it. And after a roll or so of this, it's gonna completely ruin your nozzle. So you can pick up for a couple bucks online, you can pick up various size hardened steel nozzles. You can also go with a ruby nozzle, which I hear is even stronger in most cases. I happen to have some hardened steel laying around, so I just pop that in. And that's what I used to print this. I didn't have any problems, although I will say that the default Prusa Slicer wood infill PLA settings were a little bit off. I think the temperature was a little too high because I got a lot of stringing between my layers which is why I ended up burning my arm hair off, which let's check that out now. This is one of those times where I don't know if this is the best idea I've ever had or the worst. It could be a combination of both. Uh, what we're gonna do is just kind of roll this in the heat. Oh yeah, it's already, you can see it just kind of shrivels them up. Let's see if we can just kind of roll this over this section at a time really quickly. It also got my arm a little bit. Oops. <laughs> and now that my arm hair is slowly starting to grow back and it no longer smells like burnt human flesh in my kitchen, I decided to sand this thing. So let's start sanding this down and see if we can get a better finish out of it. I think I picked probably the single most difficult model to possibly sand. So I, if I did this over again, what I think I would do is I would spend more time on the, the wood PLA itself and trying to get the settings just right so it doesn't have any stringing. Because what I'm finding is getting in and clearing up some of the nubs left over from the stringing that I burnt off is really, really difficult because of the just the way the model's built. It's a cool model, but we're gonna have some, uh, you know, as Bob Ross says, some happy little accidents in here. It's not perfect. It's not meant to be. It's kind of that organic wood shape. So I think it'll be fine. So what it is, I just kind of, you know, I got in there, I sanded as much of it as possible. And now I'm gonna try and clean it up a little bit. It actually, it feels a lot more like a piece of wood, oddly enough, now that it's, it's roughed up and it's not so smooth. So now I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna bust out the wood stain and um, we're gonna get these sponges and just see if we can kind of get in there and this is gonna be fun. <laughs> I don't really have much of a plan here. I'm just gonna kind of get this on the sponge and then kind of dab it into all the crevices and cracks in the wood, well in the PLA. 
and just see how it kind of naturally ends up looking. I think the cool thing about this is it's going to add some imperfections in the color, which, you know, if you look at wood, it has obviously grain and everything else. So you're going to get kind of naturally those imperfections and the different striations, little layers. And that's really all I'm going for here is make it look like it has some, some layers, some depth to it. I'm not going with a terribly dark stain. This is called English chestnut. The sponge is working pretty well because you can kind of dab it in there. Some of these areas you have to kind of let it flow in there because it's so... I mean, this is a tough model to kind of do this to, but... Yeah, I think that's it. I'm gonna let this dry. Looking at the surface and then comparing that and contrasting that to the, the bottom there. I mean, what a difference. You get the different colors kind of seeping into the different layers of the PLA and uh, it really makes it look a lot more like wood. I think this is gonna be pretty convincing once it's done. Model's dry and I think it came out great overall. You can see some of the details the coloring, the different layers come out. It almost gives it sort of that wood grain look that you'd hope for. And probably the coolest thing is it smells like wood. If you smell this or you have somebody else smell this and they're trying to figure out what this is made out of, it's pretty convincing that it smells like wood. Obviously there are some giveaways if you look really closely at the details, but overall, not bad. This is something I'm gonna set up on my mantle and I think it's gonna look pretty cool. I'm going to drop a link in the description to both the filament that I used as well as this model. These guys do some really cool stuff. So be sure to check that out and let me know in the comments if there are other types of filaments that you want me to try and see if I can print something cool.